Sportsmanship can be wonderful to see in action, but unfortunately it does not always prevail, and there have been many truly shocking unsportsmanlike moments over the years in boxing. In these moments, there is clearly no love found between these boxers and their opponents. Butler vs. Grant After dropping a unanimous decision to Grant as part of a charity card to benefit the survivors of 9-11 terrorist attacks, Butler executed the most cowardly sucker punch in boxing history. Following the announcement of the judge's decision, the two boxers approached one another, presumably to exchange congratulations. Instead, Butler, his gloves removed, leveled Grant with a full force overhand right to the face. At the moment Grant was hit, he was in the midst of attempting to embrace Butler. James Butler with the cowardly move of the night. Grant suffered a dislocated jaw and a severely lacerated tongue. Butler was charged with assault and spent four months in prison for the vicious and cowardly attack. Joshua vs. White as the bell sounded to signal the end of a torrid opening round for White, Joshua attempted to add further punishment and hit him with a late left hook. Then all hell broke loose. The referee jumped in between the pair and separated them, but White hurled a left of his own in response. He then stormed across the ring and threw a huge looping right hand at AJ, which was missed by a whisker. Well, Joshua certainly landed off the bell. Everybody's in there. Mike Tyson vs. Orlin Norris At the conclusion of the first round, Tyson and Norris were in a clinch. The bell sounded, ringing no less than five times as the referee worked to separate the fighters. Then, as Norris relaxed and dropped his hands, Tyson threw a left hook with his full weight behind it. Norris hit the deck like he'd been shot. Falling so awkwardly, he injured his right knee and could not continue. The bout was ruled a no contest. Tyson vs. Holyfield One of the most savage moments in boxing history took place at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, in perhaps the biggest sporting event of the 1990s. Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson met a second time. Tyson, frustrated from all the headbutting in the match, resorted to biting off Holyfield's ear. Riddick Bowie vs. Andrew Golota Andrew Golota took on former heavyweight champion Riddick Bowie, and the Polish underdog dominated. Then in the seventh round, he got himself disqualified by taking repeated shots at Bowie's groin. If the low blows were cheap, then what followed was an absolute bargain. A riot started, as several of Bowie's security team entered the ring and exchanged punches with Golota before a member of Big Daddy's entourage cracked the pole over the head with a walkie-talkie from behind. Derek Gaynor vs. Freddie Norwood The crowning cheap shot happened right at the end, as Gaynor landed a vicious retaliatory low blow when the referee was restraining Norwood and had pinned his arms. Lil Hagler couldn't recover, and for reasons no one understands, the fight was awarded to Gaynor. Floyd Mayweather Jr. vs. Arturo Gatti Late in the first round, Mayweather moved in and put his forearm on the back of Gatti's neck as Gatti ducked, initiating a clinch. Referee Earl Morton clearly commanded, stop punching! Mayweather ignored him and landed a right and a hard left as Gatti straightened up. When Gatti turned to the referee to complain, Mayweather stepped in and decked Arturo with a left hook. Gatti wasn't even looking at Mayweather at the time. Arthur Abraham vs. Andre Durrell Having dominated most of the fight, Durrell suddenly found himself on the defensive as Abraham, hopelessly behind on points, came on strong. In the 10th, Abraham landed some heavy shots, even scoring a knockdown which was erroneously ruled a slip by the referee. A frantic Abraham continued chasing in the 11th, and when Darrell slipped on one of the plastic logos on the canvas and fell to a half squat, King Arthur slammed him with a right hand. Darrell toppled over and seemingly lapsed into unconsciousness, his legs twitching. Abraham was disqualified. Abraham should be disqualified. Darrell claimed to be seriously injured by the foul and didn't compete again for almost two years. Barrera vs. Marquez 
In round 7, Barrera connected with a perfectly timed counter right hand that dropped Dinamita to all fours. Instead of going immediately to a neutral corner, Barrera stood over Marquez, hesitated for a moment, and then blasted Marquez in the side of the head with another right hand. As a result, the legitimate knockdown was waved off by referee Jay Nadi, who then deducted a point from the champion for the sucker punch. Marquez went on to win the decision. Floyd Mayweather Jr. vs. Victor Ortiz Ortiz inflicted a blatant headbutt on Mayweather near the end of the fourth round, leading to an immediate timeout as referee Joe Cortez deducted a point. A contrite Ortiz with his hands down and not realizing Cortez had signaled for the fight to resume attempted to apologize to the champion. When Mayweather, with his hands on Ortiz's shoulders and nodding as if to accept the apology, abruptly cold-cocked Ortiz with a left hook, and then an overhand right, ending the bout. Ricky Hatton vs. Kostiatsu This may be the most intentionally accurate low blow ever thrown. Ricky Hatton wanted to get back at Kostihatsu for throwing a low blow early. And he made his look like he meant it. With pinpoint accuracy, Hatton hit Tazu right on the cup immediately after and was warned by the referee. Hatton would go on to win the fight after Tazu retired in the 11th round. Billy Dibb vs. Kenichi Yamaguchi. In a five-star Hall of Shame example of incompetent officiating, Australian Billy Dibb was somehow awarded a first-round TKO victory after punching Yamaguchi in the face while he was on the canvas. Having already suffered a knockdown earlier in the fight, a frustrated Dibb rushed Yamaguchi, who lost his balance and fell to his knees. Dibb then blindsided his opponent with a left hand right in the front of the Australian referee, who then deemed Yamaguchi unfit to continue, and incredibly awarded the bout to Dibb. Roy Jones Jr. vs. Montel Griffin After eight rounds, Griffin appeared on his way to a huge upset win when Jones finally stepped in and landed a thunderous right hand in the ninth that had the challenger staggering all over the ring. Griffin finally dropped to one knee, and a frustrated Jones took the opportunity to paste Griffin with not one, but two illegal punches. Griffin slumped to the canvas and Jones was disqualified. Bobby Pacquiao vs. Hector Velasquez Manny Pacquiao's younger brother Bobby probably had high expectations to be as great as his brother, but his fight with Hector Velasquez kept him from pursuing his title dreams. He was disqualified in round 11 of a very close fight, one that he was winning. Make sure to watch one of our other videos on the screen right now.